Hey everyone, I'm Retro Ruts and thanks for swinging by. If this is your first time here, thanks for checking me out. Uh, my channel is all about going through and reviewing old 80s and 90s comics, uh, video games, uh, figures, going through some fig hunts, what I picked up. So if that's kind of what you're into, you're in the right place. Uh, if you're coming back, thanks for returning. I appreciate it. Uh, without further ado, let's get into a couple things I've picked up over the last few weeks. Uh, obviously, it's been pretty slow. I haven't been able to go and do a lot of in-person fig hunting. Uh, a lot of stuff's been kind of just online. Uh, but I have got a couple good things over the last few weeks, so uh, let me share them with you and see what we got. Uh, first thing I want to go through uh, were some items that were gifted to me from a good friend. He's a big supporter of the channel. He's gifted me some things in the past. Uh, some turtle stuff. He's also donated some uh, or gifted some stuff for my daughter as well. So I greatly appreciate that man. Thanks a lot. I know he's given me some other stuff too that I'm going to go through in the future. Uh, but today we're going to look at a whole bunch of Mighty Max play sets he, uh, he sent over. Uh, there's a whole bag. I think there's like six or seven of them. So I just picked out a couple that I I uh, thought were really cool and I can't wait to add these uh, uh, to my, they're going to go to my miscellaneous, kind of my retro ruts, 80s, 90s uh, toy shelf. So for those of you that don't remember Mighty Max, uh, these were the boys equivalents, I guess if you want to say it, I don't know if that's politically correct anymore to say. Um, but compared to the Polly Pocket, same company, I think it was, uh, they were called Bluebird back in like 92, 93. Now the difference with these ones is these were more of a horror adventure uh, themed kind of play set. I never had these as a kid. Uh, I just wasn't really into, uh, you know, smaller play sets in that. Just wasn't my thing. Uh, but these are really cool. So this little guy was Mighty Max. So he was just kind of like a preteen boy. Uh, now there was a show that kind of accompanied these, uh, and it was all about him being like a, the chosen one to kind of vanquish evil, and he had this magic hat that would teleport him to different places around the world where he had to kind of go and solve him kind of like a Scooby-Doo Buffy the Vampire you know defeat the monster of the day or monster of the week type of thing uh, so this play set here was kind of like a zombie themed one so very dark uh, you know for a 90s kind of toy line so this one's got all zombies now there was another one here this one's a Cyclops one and what was cool with these play sets is all the stuff that opened up inside added to the, you know, when it was closed, just the ambiance, if you will, of how it looks. Look at the eyeballs. So this is kind of like a creature thing. It's got some type of demon or, I don't know, some type of monster. And then Max himself. And then all of them kind of had, you know, the trap doors and all this. They were actually really, really well done, um, surprisingly, for being so small. And it's awesome to to see these complete. I mean, these things are 30 years old. And to find all these, to have all these little pieces, like these would have got sucked up in vacuums and, and who knows what else, right? So it's really awesome to to have these in the collection. And I, I greatly appreciate it, man. So, so thanks a lot again. Uh, there was also a shark one he gave me. So this was kind of like a mad scientist underwater type of thing. So like even the fins pop off and they're little... You know, squid guys. So that's really cool. Okay, next uh, was a big gamble, I guess. Uh, not that big, but I saw someone on Facebook Marketplace had a box and it just said miscellaneous, I think it was dinosaurs or something like that. I was like, nah, for 15 bucks, whatever, I'll, I'll go in. I, I kind of see something I recognize, but I couldn't fully make it out. So I uh, picked it up. And got home and man it was a box of gold um, for retro figures there was a lot of junk and they're kind of like those little you know the dinosaurs you get in like a, a bin and all that they're not really worth anything so a lot of that I kind of gave away um, to some local kids uh, you know it's kind of great for you know three four five year olds to kind of play with uh, a bunch of them I actually donated to my my daughter's daycare so I can have fun with those um, but in the bottom of this bin and this was something that made me extremely happy. My inner child was was, was jumping up and down because I had these figures as a kid and they meant so much to me um, were the Jurassic Park figures that were in there. And there was a lot of them. 
Uh, there was probably at least $100 worth of Jurassic Park figures. So my favorite in there was the Juvenile T-Rex. I had this one, and I played the heck out of this thing back in the day, so it's really cool to kind of have it back in the collection. Uh, and you know it was Jurassic Park, uh, and that was kind of the big thing with the marketing for these toys, is they had the GP logo and then like a barcode number of each uh, type of dinosaur. So on the, uh, the commercial toy ads, they always said, look for the mark of Jurassic Park. But the young T-Rex wants a piece of the action. Can the dinosaurs be recaptured? Look for the JP mark. It's happening, but only at Jurassic Park. So that was kind of cool, uh, seeing that. They had the rubberized skin. Some of them had the, the dino damage, so this one had it. Now it's missing the piece, unfortunately, which, whatever, it still looks awesome. Uh, the sculpting on these were amazing. Like, look at that. And I remember, I think you can, if you pinch his neck, he kind of chomps a little bit. But like the detailing on that was so awesome for you know a early 90s toy so there's the t-rex uh kind of the same scale size wise there was um there's actually two of these stegosauruses this was the better looking uh one that was in the better looking shape the other one was was okay but there was two of them in there i definitely had this one uh, and this one also had the the dino damage the, uh, the other one didn't but that's okay <coughs> so two of the, the t-rexes so that's or Stegosaurus, sorry, so that's awesome. Then there was also, I forget what these ones were called. Some with a D. Uh, so there's two of these guys, and I actually still have my original one from back in the day, and it works a little better than this one did. So that's kind of cool. Again, the Jurassic Park logo there. Uh, what else was there? Uh, the Pterodactyl was awesome. I had this one too, so you push a little button on his back. And we start flapping. Mouth opened. His legs moved. Uh, there was the little Dilophosaurus. Now his arm's broken, but that's uh, that's okay. You can't really tell that much. And this one actually uh, spit water in him. It didn't really work that well. Uh, there was another one that also came out. I think it was an electronic screaming one, and it had the full uh, sail or whatever they call it that came out, or his, his mane. Uh, that came out there and then there was also a little baby pterodactyl now these were one of the uh, company uh, baby dinosaurs that came with the human figures so this one actually came with Alan Grant I think uh, so all of them had a different one like I think the boy um, Lex I think he had a Brachiosaurus that was in a, a cage um, Ellie had I think it was a baby Triceratops uh, Dennis Nedry had a, a baby Dilophosaurus and then there was the park ranger I can't remember his name off the top of my head but he had a, I think it was either a T-Rex or a or baby raptor so that was cool so these are awesome to kind of have I wasn't going to get back into uh, collecting Jurassic Park figures because it, it's just <coughs> excuse me it, they're a little pricey and it was something I just really didn't want to have to do but to get a whole whack load of them and these were a I had all these figures as a kid, so that's really cool. I actually had the whole playset back in the, at the compound with the gates and the, the fence. Uh, and I remember it was weird. It had like a, a interactive thing. You'd push a button and every couple minutes it would have like a random voice command that would happen. Like, oh, the T-Rex is attacking. Oh, the Raptors have escaped. And it's the Jurassic Park Command Compound. <laughs> with an electronic computer that says over a hundred commands. Ben's help! Ah. We need more firepower! The computer... Ben's help! ...helps you control Jurassic Park. Got him! T-Rex! Attack ah. It would do that, but it was weird, because I don't know if mine was broken, but it kept going off like every 45... Like, it went on for about 45 minutes, it felt like. It was a long time, and it got really annoying after a while. So I always kind of stopped playing. I think I actually took the batteries out because I got sick of it. Because I remember a few times it actually going off at like 2 in the morning and waking me up. And it was the scariest freaking thing for like, you know, a 9-year-old to wake up. It's like, whirk, whirk, the alarm's going off and it had a blinking red light. Uh, I think I also had, I had the Ford Ranger, which was the vehicle that the T-Rex had flipped in the movie and was attacking the kids. And I think there was a helicopter, if I'm not mistaken. No idea where that stuff went. I think it got put in a box when we moved and ended up in an attic and who knows could still be there uh you know 
a lot of stuff, unfortunately, when you move a lot, gets lost and or gets sold in grad sales and you weren't aware of. Who knows, right? Uh, so also in that box was a little job of the hut. But he's not little; he's pretty big actually. So this was from the 1997 line. I'm not a, a Star Wars uh, figure collector. I love Star Wars, love the movies, the shows, the games, everything, but uh, just not into the toys really. That's that's a deep hole I don't want to dive down. Uh, even though there are some really cool toys. So that one I'm actually going to gift to uh, a good friend of mine, a um, good supporter of the, the channel and that. So he's a big Star Wars collector, so he's going to go nuts for, for getting that. And then also in there was a Masters of the Universe Cringer slash Battle Cat. I, I'm not a big He-Man guy. Like I, I watched the show in that, but I wasn't a big uh, toy collector. It was kind of before my time. I came out really early 80s, but I knew about it. I watched, you know, a syndication of it. So this was pretty cool. So he's just missing his head, his headpiece there. Uh, and actually, my, my buddy had gifted me, I think in the last video, uh, the Skeletor on the Panthor. So if I can get myself a, a decent little He-Man, this will look good on my miscellaneous, uh, again, Retro Ruts shelf with all my other figures. Uh, only thing else I picked up recently, these were uh, store purchases. I kind of walked through and I saw these and thought they were really cool. <coughs> so these are the um, the core class War for Cybertron uh, figures. So I got Megatron, Starscream, and Optimus. Now these are cool because these were like these are the like G1 kind of looking characters. And I, I got these because I thought these would look really cool when I get my Transformers display set up again because I have the big Titan class figures like Metroplex, Fortress Maximus, Trypticon, Scorponok. And I thought these would look sweet, you know, posted, like, if I have those in kind of my display case. So you could have, like, Megatron, you know, sitting on Scorponok's, you know, shoulder. Uh, you could have Metroplex kind of holding Starscream. Just for scale-wise, I think it'd look really awesome. Uh, to have these so that would be kind of cool to when I get that set up again to put those in there but that's uh, that's about it guys uh, obviously like I said before things have been kind of slow haven't been able to go out uh, and, and do a lot uh, you know, fig hunting wise so uh, hopefully in the near future things are gonna get a little bit better um, haven't been able to go to comic book stores uh, as much as I'd like to either uh, I have a couple books I actually want to get slabbed uh, and sent to CGC to get graded. So there's a local shop in my area, uh, 204 Comics, uh, which just opened about uh, two months ago or so. A really cool guy named Ashley works there, or runs it actually. So I picked up a couple things there, looking forward to do more there, maybe uh, uh, do a little uh, video there one day. Um, the other shop I support um, is Book Fair. Uh, that's one I've been going to since I was probably seven, eight years old, probably where I got my first comic books. So I'm glad they're still kind of in business. Uh, obviously comic book stores are kind of a kind of a dying breed. They are kind of coming back. Uh, but the old school comic book stores are, they're, they're, they're mostly gone. Um, the newer versions coming out are really cool to see, kind of the next generation. But uh, definitely make sure, guys, if you get a chance, go and support your local comic book stores. Uh, it's so important to do that. Because if you don't support them, they're going to disappear. Uh, we're not going to have them. Um, it's something we're not going to be able to share with the next generation. I'm looking forward to being able to take my daughter uh, to buy comic books. So please, please support them if you can. Um, so big shout out to, to 204 Comics and, uh, and Book Fair. Those are my, my shops. All right, so that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for swinging by. I greatly appreciate it. If you want to give me a thumbs up or a subscription, that would be awesome. Uh, but until next time, keep safe, true believers. Excelsior!